Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live on Mars? Well, wonder no more, because in this video we're going to show you some of the craziest and coolest habitats that humans could build on the Red Planet. And we're also gonna roast them, because why not? But be warned, some of them might make you laugh, cry, or cringe. So get ready for a wild ride as we explore the world of Mars habitats. Before we move on, here's a question for you. What kind of habitat would you choose if you got chosen to be the lucky or unlucky ones that get to go to Mars? Let me know in the comment section. Now let's get started. Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun and the second smallest in the solar system. Mars is often called the Earth's twin because it has a similar size, mass and rotation period. But don't let that fool you because Mars is also very different from Earth in many ways. For example, it has a very thin atmosphere, which means it has very low air pressure, low temperatures and very high radiation levels. Not exactly the ideal conditions for human life, huh? So how do we overcome these challenges and make Mars habitable? There are two main approaches, terraforming and building habitats. Now you might ask, what is terraforming? Well, terraforming is the process of transforming a planet's environment to make it more Earth-like by changing its temperature, atmosphere and surface features. This sounds like a cool idea, but it's also super hard, super costly and time-consuming. It would require massive amounts of energy, resources and technology, and could take centuries or even millennia to achieve. Plus, it could have ethical and environmental implications such as destroying the native Martian life forms, if they exist or ruin the Martian scenery. On the other hand, we have building habitats, which means making our own homes that can keep us alive and happy on Mars. By controlling the temperature, pressure, oxygen, and radiation levels. This sounds like a more down-to-earth and achievable option, but it's also not a walk in the park. It would require a lot of brain power, creativity, and skill. And it would depend on the availability of materials, power, and water sources. And oh, let's not forget emotional and social drawbacks, such as feeling lonely, bored, and stressed. For the people living in cramped and fake spaces. So yeah, they better add an Apple Vision Pro 2 and a PlayStation 6 to the inventory. Or maybe a therapist. Or a rocket back to Earth. If we want to live on Mars, we better have a good plan because Mars is not a very friendly place. But don't worry, we have some ideas for you. There are different types of habitats that you could build on Mars. Each one has its own pros and cons and its own style and vibe. Let's check them out. First, we have surface habitats, which are structures that are built on the surface of Mars. Well, obviously, either partially or fully exposed to the Martian environment. Because who doesn't love a little challenge? These habitats could be made of various materials such as metal, plastic or inflatable modules. And they could be covered with layers of soil, ice or other materials to provide insulation and radiation protection. Surface habitats could also have windows or skylights to allow natural light and views of the surroundings. There are some examples of surface habitats. One of them is the Mars One project, which was a wild plan that aimed to establish a permanent human settlement on Mars by the mid-2020s, using outdated technology and no return tickets. The project wanted to use inflatable modules that would be connected by tubes and covered with dirt as a protective layer against radiation. Solar panels, water machines and plants were also part of the plan. But the project got a lot of backlash and skepticism, like its doability, money and morals, and it went bankrupt in 2019. Another one is the Mars X House Project, a cool contender and prize winner in the NASA 3D Printed Habitat Challenge. A contest that asked teams to design and build habitats using 3D printing technology and local materials. It came up with a hexagonally shaped structure that would be 3D printed using a mix of basalt fiber and bioplastic. It also had a double shell system that would create an air gap between the inner and outer shells, keeping the heat and the radiation out. Now if you don't like living on the surface of Mars, you could always go underground. That's right, some habitats might be built below the ground either by digging holes or by using natural features, like caves or lava tubes. These habitats have some advantages over surface ones, like more protection from radiation, temperature changes and falling meteors. But they also have some drawbacks, like less access to sunlight, power and communication, trees and books. Another cool idea is setting up shop in Martian caves or lava tubes. 
like the Caves of Mars project suggested. These spots offer extra protection from radiation and temperature swings. Plus, we wouldn't need a fancy shield overhead. And listen, robots could do the heavy lifting before humans even arrive. Then there's the mobile habitat concept. Picture a rover cruising around Mars, giving us a full tour of the planet. It's like a road trip, but on another planet. And how about using plants to help with air and food? It's like having a garden in space. But we'd need to make sure these plants can handle the lower pressure. Now let's dive into the world of Mars biodomes. Imagine massive structures on the Martian surface bustling with life and producing oxygen and food for humans. It's like having a little slice of Earth right on Mars. But wait, there's more. Scientists are getting creative with bacteria that can turn Martian soil and ice into oxygen. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade, Martian style. But here's the problem. How long can we go with the pressure inside these biodomes and still keep our plants happy? It's like a space gardening experiment gone wild. NASA even tested growing lettuce in low pressure conditions. And guess what? It thrived. That's not all. Researchers discovered that some lichen and bacteria could survive Martian conditions for over a month. They're like the little space survivors braving the harsh Martian environment like champs. And scientists have proposed using cyanobacteria to transform the entire Martian landscape into a biodome. These hardy bacteria could turn Martian soil into fertile ground, paving the way for more advanced life. It's like terraforming Mars one microorganism at a time. Maybe in the future we'll not just survive on Mars, but thrive by making the most of what the red planet has to offer. One idea for supporting a Mars habitat is digging deep underground, tapping into subterranean water reserves. With a little Martian magic, we can split that water into oxygen and hydrogen. Mix in some nitrogen and argon and we've got ourselves some breathable air. But wait, there's more. That hydrogen? Yeah, we're turning it into plastics and methane for rocket fuel. Talk about multitasking. Now let's talk about building materials. Forget hauling heavy loads from Earth, we're thinking local. Iron could be our go-to for 3D printed habitats, while ice mined from the Martian soil could shield us from the elements. But why stop there? Let's dream big and turn the entire planet into our playground. We're talking about vaporizing materials to pump up the atmosphere, planting lichen and moss to kickstart Mars's ecosystem, and maybe even growing pine trees someday. And who said rocket science had to be boring? We're cooking up rocket fuel right on Mars using the Sabatier process. Turning hydrogen and carbon dioxide into methane and water, then firing it up for a methane oxygen rocket engine. Sure, it needs a hefty dose of energy, but hey, where there's a will, there's a way. But living on Mars is not all work and no play. What if we told you that you could also enjoy a comfortable space house that can take you anywhere in the solar system? Well, look no further than this amazing invention by Sierra Nevada Corporation. It's like a giant bouncy house for astronauts but with serious space travel capabilities. This inflatable space house can carry up to four astronauts and is perfect for long trips to other worlds. Measuring 26 feet across and boasting three floors, this space palace is incredibly spacious. But the real magic happens when it inflates in space, providing all the professional and personal needs for astronauts during their journeys. It's so light that it can easily perch atop SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, making it a breeze to launch into space. And with its versatility, it can be sized for any mission, from orbiting Earth's space station to a permanent base on the Moon or Mars. With features like living quarters, sleeping spaces, a greenhouse, and even a gym, this inflatable habitat has everything astronauts need for deep space travel. Although it won't be part of the upcoming Moon missions, it's paving the way for future space exploration and colonization. So what do you think? Which method is best for humanity? You know, the stakes are very high. There's almost no room for error. Otherwise, well, I think you know what could happen. But let's say we did everything perfectly except for one thing, the planet itself. What if Mars had some surprises for us? Something that we've seen on Earth, but much more mysterious. Do you have any idea what it could be? Well, don't rack your brains too much, just click here to find out. Trust me, it'll be worth it. And before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please show some love by smashing the like button, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to our channel with the bell icon. Trust me, it's not rocket science, but it really helps us a lot. Thanks for watching, see you soon with more amazing space videos.